our next speaker, Ying San Man. Jump. Jump. Ying San Man. It was a beautiful spring day. The sky was bright blue. The lake was a sparkling, sh shimmering silver. And the greenery below was, well, green. But Chuck wasn't seeing any of this. He was looking down from the window ledge at the crowd below. They were chanting, jump, 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 jump. Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, and honored guests. That was the scene right outside my office window last year. Only Chuck was no office worker. He was a little baby goose covered with fluffy yellow down. <laughs> he looked like a tennis ball. Obviously, Chuck was a troubled kid. And what do we do? When kids are in trouble, that's right, blame the parents. <laughs> After all, they were the ones who built that nest up there. At first, it was so cute watching the chicks playing on the ledge outside my window. I thought an instant connection with the littlest one. I named him Chuck. He was the runt of the litter always struggling to keep up with his bigger brothers and sisters. I'm the youngest of six, always reminded of my place in the family. I don't know if Chuck felt the same way, but he was the only one who would come waddling over to watch me through the window. Kind of like a zoo, <laughs> only in reverse. The fateful day came when Mom and Papa Goose decided it was time for a swim. They spread their wings and jumped off that ledge, urging the chicks to follow. Well, what followed was sheer panic, running back and forth, squawking, flapping useless little wings, and that was just me. <laughs> Trapped behind the window, I could not stop the little ones from plunging to what I thought was certain death. One by one they went over till all that remained was one last chick, Chuck. Chuck looked at me imploringly, but I couldn't help him. He looked down. I knew what he was thinking. I'm going to die. <laughs> I felt exactly the same way as a brand new Toastmaster perched on the edge of the precipice that was my icebreaker, terrified to jump in. How could the audience expect me, me, the runt of the litter, not to make a fool of myself? Couldn't they see my knees are knocking, the sweat dripping from my palms, the glazed look in my eyes? <laughs> then my vision cleared. I saw the bright blue future of possibilities, the sparkling silver of success, and friendly faces in front. Their smiling eyes, encouraging nods, and hearty applause were telling me, come on. Everything's going to be OK. Just jump. Chuck looked back one last time. But this time he looked different. There was an air of calm and poise about him. He was ready. But the last thing he did before he jumped off that ledge was blink. Or was it a wink? I couldn't tell, because I could only see one side of his face. <laughs> A minute went by. Two minutes. 
Finally, a family of geese emerged from the greenery and headed straight for the lake. Mama and Papa, brothers and sisters. And Chuck, yes, the runt of the letter survived the first test of his life. A miracle? Actually, no. Turns out Chuck's parents knew exactly what they were doing after all. By building their nest directly over the thickest patch of ivy, they ensured that Chuck was gently cushioned to a safe landing. By the same token, my Toastmasters family knew exactly how to guide me down safely, cushioning my landing. I came from that first speech with no bruises whatsoever. <laughs> Not even to my ego. Last week, I was at my desk watching the geese swirl and whirl in the sky when one of them swooped down to my window. Could this full-grown goose with a sleek long neck and a three-foot wingspan be Chuck? I wasn't sure. We looked at each other through the window for a while, and then he turned to go. But just before he jumped off that ledge to soar back into the sky, he turned his head. And this time, I know he winked at me. <laughs> Life is full of ledges, some of them high, some of them low. How will you deal with challenges? Hang back and be stranded forever? Or trust in the experts? And jump, Mr. Toastmaster.